from DMI St. John the Baptist University. And good morning to, I think it's not morning, but I probably think it's afternoon in India today by this time. So today, let us continue with our international webinar. And to our viewers, thank you for logging in today on the third day. So today, we are going to be, to be discussing about the roles of EDIC. And today with me, we have Dr. Lloyd Ryan, and he's going to be introduced by Mr. Anthony. I hope we are all remembering Mr. Anthony. We thank you so much for having me here, Mr. Ryan. It's such an honor. So please, before we start our program, Mr. Anthony is going to introduce Dr. Royds and explain to us what or everything we need to know about him. So please tune in and listen to what Mr. Anthony is going to say. Over to you, sir. Mr. Anthony. Thank you very much, madam. Good morning, friends. Good morning, participants. Good morning, management of uh, St. John the Baptist University, Malawi, St. Eugene University, Zambia. And today we are on the third day uh, in the row, actually. An important day, actually. Day before yesterday, we have uh, uh, discussed something related with how to settle our career, actually. That day you may came to the conclusion, dear students, that based on your skills, competencies, you are supposed to choose a career. And yesterday there was a young and energetic entrepreneur who was speaking with you regarding the cash flow quadrants. Uh, there are four important cash flow quadrants you people have discussed yesterday actually. Employment, uh, self-employment, business owner and investment. So these are all the four uh, main uh, cash flow quadrants yesterday. Now you are under a little uh, dilemma that uh, in which cash quadrant they shall be moved towards actually further. I know pretty well that the uh, uh, majority of you people have to start your career in employment actually because uh, as we discussed yesterday we are in the need of uh, uh, money actually to run our uh, everyday uh, things and uh, still as yesterday the young uh, uh, Grayson Tony was uh, speaking with us he told uh, he is working for some company from morning till evening 6 30 taking some break spent some time with his family after that, he is working for his passion, actually. That is his entrepreneurship. Every one of you, I am hopefully strongly believe that every one of you are having some ideas to incorporate, uh, making yourself, uh, uh, you know, emerging yourself in the uh, new business sector. Now, you are having some confusion. How can my business can put place? The first and foremost problem is finance. Where can I get finance? Where can I get support? How can I, my ideation can become a true how can I, uh, you know, develop uh, uh, my ideas into? Uh, how can can somebody is available for incubate my my project? Can anybody is available to take care of my project? Can anybody is available to helpful for me to reaching my goals? The answer is entrepreneur development center. In our institution, it is uh, 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 calling by EDIC, entrepreneur development innovation center. And now today we are having a very eminent, uh, rich, uh, uh, an academician with the richest experience, uh, almost 35 years of uh, richest experience uh, uh, we are having today actually. I am very happy to introduce uh, Dr. Lutz Bhuvala Ryan and uh, I'm, I'm, I would like to share some information uh, regarding uh, my respected and beloved sir. I am just sharing a screen. Hope you are all seeing the screen actually. I am very happy to introduce today's uh, uh, chief presentation uh, uh, guide to us, Dr. Lutz Bhubala Ryan. His academic qualification is NPOM MPhil PhD. He is having uh, double PhD actually, two research he did. One in Farmers, another one is in Business Administration. And he is a director of EDC, Entrepreneur Development Cell at FXEC, that is Francis Xavier Engineering College. One of the reputed institutions in Tamil Nadu state, and he is the president of MHRD, Ministry of Human Resource Development Cell in that college. Also, he is the program coordinator of MSME Micro Small Medium Enterprises. So, he is having vast experience uh, how the micro, small, and uh, medium sized enterprises are, are behaving actually. And as far as his academic experience is concerned, he is having 35 years of richest experience. Retired as a HOD of uh, Thomas Department, 
from St. Xavier's College. Uh, again, it's a, uh, it's a very famous college in the state, actually. And he served as a board member for uh, Manon Maniam Sundaranath University, which is located in Tamil Nadu state. And the MSME government certified uh, Sigma 6 green belt holder, actually. He certified, he certified this uh, from the government of India. And he guided more than 15 research scholars, research scholars in PhD. He published seven books. He published seven books and he published 149 papers in national and international journals. And his area of interest includes entrepreneurship, innovations, and life skill development. See, such a wonderful personality today we are having. So, today, sir is going to explain how the EDC is functioning and how this EDC is helpful to you to reach your goals, how you can utilize the services of this EDC and make your projects come into reality. I don't want to take much of my timing. Now, I'm very uh, happy to share the uh, stage with uh, my respected and beloved uh, Dr. Lutz Umala Ryan, sir. Welcome, sir. This is yours, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, <clears throat> good morning, friends. Are you happy now? Okay. <clears throat> Hope you are all are doing well. Dear friends, today I want to share some of my thoughts with you. I am not going to give any lecture on EDIC. But I am going to share my thoughts. I am having a, a rich experience. Now I am going to share my experience only. Okay. Before starting this, I personally thank uh, Mr. Anthony Sohairaj, the head of uh, ADIC, St. John the Baptist University, Malawi. And the management of uh, St. John the Baptist and the and St. John Eugene University. Myself, uh, Lotus Royan, I am the Director of uh, Entrepreneurship Development Cell. I am working in uh, Francis Xavier Engineering College, Trinalveli, in Tamil Nadu. It is in the uh, uh, south part of uh, India. The topic for uh, today's uh, discussion is entrepreneurship development and innovation. Here, I am going to give my thoughts in three areas. The objectives of entrepreneurship development, the major functions as well as the activities of entrepreneurship development. These are all the three major areas I am going to share with you. See, a lot of people will have ideas. The problem is uh, all people will not going to take uh, uh, steps immediately. You and I may have some idea. Are we implementing our ideas immediately? No. We hesitate to implement those ideas. But the true entrepreneur will implement those ideas into action. Here, I have on a, a quote from Nolan Bushnell. is an American businessman having a electrical engineering degree. He says that uh, the true entrepreneur is a doer and not a dreamer. But if he is a smart person, he will definitely make use of his ideas. He will put, uh, put 
his ideas into action. He is called an entrepreneur. Just to see this slide, everyone can tell you the risk. An entrepreneur can see the reward. Suppose uh, if you say to somebody that uh, you are having some idea, what they will tell immediately? Oh, this is not right. In this, uh, we have so much of a risk. Everybody will say like that. Uh, remember, in each and every activity, we have risk. We are facing risk. Even at the time of uh, taking one step ahead, we face a lot of risk. But an entrepreneur can see the reward. If that person is an entrepreneur, definitely he will take risk. Why he is taking risk? He is taking risk just to make use of the opportunity available to him. At the end of the tunnel, definitely it will give some reward to the entrepreneur. That is very important. Uh, see this slide. The entrepreneur always search for change. He responds to it and he exploits it as an opportunity. Therefore, as an entrepreneur, we must search. We must go for uh, uh, making some change in whatever we do as an entrepreneur. Today, we are experiencing the impact of COVID-19. Because of COVID-19, we have started exploring a lot of uh, new options. We are having a lot of options. Today, we are exploring a number of options. Online webinar in colleges is one of that option. Now, for what we are doing actually, in a different situation, we find new options. Like this, entrepreneur will always search for some change. Take for an example, the cell phones we use. Nowadays, the uh, size of the cell phones uh, we use uh, is very, very thin in size. And it is uh, having a lot of features. Whereas uh, the previous models uh, we used before five years or before 10 years, you cannot compare the size as well as the uh, features of those cell phones. For being an entrepreneur, we need to search for change. We must accept the change. Once you accept the change, what you will do? You will take a lot of new initiatives. While taking new initiatives, you may come across with a lot of challenges. What you have to do? You have to overcome those challenges. Therefore, while facing the uh, uh, while facing the uh, challenges, we are getting lot of opportunities. Those opportunities uh, we need to accept. We need to uh, make use of. See, there is uh, the next important term we use next to entrepreneur is entrepreneurship. Entrepreneur is a person who takes uh, a, a lot of new initiative to start a venture of his own. What about entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is a process. It is not an event. It is a process. When we say it is a process, uh, it consists of a uh, number of stages. 
therefore we need to cross all those uh, stages in order to experience entrepreneurship of entrepreneurship is a process process of what process of identifying opportunities in the marketplace therefore in entrepreneurship what we do we are trying to identify the opportunities where it is available it is available in the marketplace therefore it is a process of identifying opportunities in the marketplace once you identify an opportunity what you have to do you have to arrange all the resources uh, what are all the resources you need to start a concern you need capital you need people to support you you need uh, the methods machines all these things are uh, essential for you to start a concern these are all a few resources you need therefore what you have to do you have to mobilize all these resources after arranging all these resources we need to exploit the opportunities we have to put it into action what we are having what for to get uh, some profit out of it normally we start a business uh, in order to gain something in that process it is not for one day or two days it is for a long period we never start a concern for one week or for one month or for a shorter period thinking very big in our mind we start the concern if it is a small concern at the time of starting the concern but what we will have in our mind a big concern after some time so entrepreneurship uh, creates wealth once you put it into action the ideas you have once you mobilize all the resources uh, you need to create some business venture what you are doing you are trying to create some wealth so actually entrepreneurship creates wealth how it creates wealth by bringing together various resources how in a new ways to start and operate an enterprise this is very important being a prudent entrepreneur you must start a concern of your own using the available resources in a different way that is about entrepreneurship now i'll come to the entrepreneurship development so in order to develop entrepreneurship what we need to do what need to be done at the institutional level this we need to think for this only i am going to concentrate more in this uh, discussion so first of all we have to develop institutional mechanism institutional mechanism for what institutional mechanism to create entrepreneurial culture therefore first of all we need to create an entrepreneurial culture in all the academic institutions this is the need of the her in the educational institutions uh, we teach a lot of uh, subjects in different domains if it is an arts and science college we teach science related arts related courses if it is an engineering college 
we teach a different subject according to the domain it may be a civil engineering or electrical engineering or mechanical engineering or electronics and communication engineering whatever it may be the uh, domain in which we offer our course our programs we need to create uh, an entrepreneurial culture in almost all the academic institutions why we need to create a entrepreneurial culture in the academic institutions for developing entrepreneurs for the generation of wealth for the generation of wealth for the generation of wealth uh, we need to develop uh, we need to promote uh, entrepreneurship this is very very important once you develop uh, entrepreneurship you can provide lot of employment to number of individuals that is the ultimate uh, aim of generating or developing entrepreneurs entre uh, developing a uh, uh, lot of uh, institution business uh, ventures now we'll come to the objectives of entrepreneurship i think you are having entrepreneurship development cell in your institutions now we'll see the objectives of the entrepreneurship development cell first of all we'll go through all the objectives after that uh, we'll come to the functions while discussing the functions uh, we'll have detailed uh, discussion on each and every function and i will show you number of uh, uh, supporting evidences also for all the activities just to see the first one to act as an institutional mechanism for providing various services including information on all aspects of enterprise building to budding entrepreneurs this would be the uh, first and foremost objective of uh, any entrepreneurship development cell it says that uh, the institution must create uh, a mechanism what for for providing various services including information on all aspects of enterprise building for the creation of uh, enterprise uh, students need lot of information for the budding entrepreneurs uh, we need to give lot of information those information we need to provide for that what we need to do we need to create an institutional mechanism uh, this is the first objective of uh, entrepreneurship development cell coming to the second one <clears throat> we need to create a entrepreneurial culture in the institution what for to promote entrepreneurship development programs to women especially and weaker sections of the society here we are not uh, uh, leaving men it includes men also but we need to concentrate more on women and the weaker sections of the society once you concentrate on women and weaker sections of the society you can change a lot the for the second objective should be creation of entrepreneurial culture <clears throat> in the institution this the main idea for the creation of uh, entrepreneurial culture in the institution is to promote entrepreneurship development programs we need to conduct we need to organize lot of programs especially to the women especially to the weaker sections of the society once you target the weaker sections of the society 
once you have clipped uh, the weaker sections of the society then develop uh, then you can uh, very easily develop the economy of any nation coming to the third objective just to see to foster better linkages between the parent institution industries and r and d institutions in the region and other related organizations are engaged in promoting small and medium enterprises and non government organizations this is also very much important once you do, uh, once you start the entrepreneurship development center in your college what it says we have to create linkages between the parent institution between the various uh, industries <coughs> between uh, various r and d institutions uh, research and development institutions this is very important nowadays <coughs> in the colleges uh, we teach a lot of uh, subjects according to the domain and we used to stop with that but it is not enough so for what we need to do we need to link all the departments whether it is an arts and science college or engineering college we need to link all the department uh, with the industries say for an example if the department is mechanical department mechanical engineering department you have to connect the mechanical engineering department with the local industries which produces uh, uh, engines or motors or whatever it may be the uh, institution you have in around in and around your place if it is the physics department then you have to connect the physics department uh, with the nearby institutions <coughs> if it is the chemistry department you have to connect the de uh, chemistry department uh, with the local laboratories for whatever it may be the department uh, you are having in your institution you have to connect those departments uh, with the industries not only with the industries we have to connect all those departments with the research and the development institutions definitely you will have number of research and development institutions we need to connect all the departments all our colleges all our institutions with the research and development institutions in the region and we need to promote uh, uh, small and medium enterprises also we need to connect uh, our institutions uh, with the small and medium enterprises shortly called as smgs definitely you will have number of uh, small and medium enterprises in and around your college or in and around your institution or in and around your region what you need to do you need to connect your institution your departments uh, with those uh, small and medium enterprises what for this is necessary this is very very vital remember why it is vital if you connect uh, your departments or your institutions uh, with the small and medium enterprises definitely you can offer some solution for their problems take for an example assume that uh, you are uh, you are institution and uh, is an uh, engineering college in your uh, college uh, you may offer different um, that is a uh, different discipline uh, uh, engineering degrees <coughs> electrical engineering mechanical engineering or civil engineering computer science engineering electronics and communication engineering whatever it may be the department it can assist the small and medium enterprises 
once you assist those small and medium enterprises you can also grow you can also solve their problems and uh, you need to have some uh, uh, contact uh, with the non government organizations also shortly called as ngos whether the concern is an arts and science college or engineering college it should be connected with the society we need to connect all the institutions with the society our students must go and work in the society we need to do some service while studying in the college they must experience the social work all these things are very very essential for the entrepreneur to grow okay coming to the next uh, objective <clears throat> we need to promote enterprises and we need to promote employment opportunities also one statistics shows that if you invest uh, uh, 10000 rupees i am saying this uh, in indian rupee this is the statistics available in india if you invest uh, 10000 rupees uh, in a micro scale organization you can employ one person if you employ 1 lakh rupees in a big concern you can employ only one employee just compare in the micro scale concerns micro enterprises we are giving an up, uh, we are giving employment to one individual for the employment of uh, 10000 rupees whereas uh, if it is a large scale concern for the employment of 1 lakh rupees you are giving employment to only one person that is 10 is to 1 is the ratio for which provides uh, more employment only the micro and small scale concerns are giving more employment now for what we need to do we need to promote uh, such uh, enterprises what for to provide employment opportunity the next objective is to respond effectively to the emerging challenges and opportunities both at national and international level relating to smes and micro enterprises it says that uh, we need to respond effectively what for the small and the medium enterprises as well as the micro enterprises are um, are facing lot of challenges therefore in order to overcome those challenges uh, we need to address their uh, challenges we need to address their problems at the national as well as at the international level now i'll come to the functions of edic entrepreneurship development and innovation center so in order to do all the activities very effectively we need to do something at the college level at the institution level first of all we need to organize entrepreneurship awareness camps this is very very important uh, for all the arts and science colleges as well as uh, engineering colleges after completing the engineering degree the engineer should not search for job they must provide job to others therefore we need to create awareness at the time of uh, uh, studying in our institutions itself 
we need to create awareness about the entrepreneurial opportunities by conducting entrepreneurship awareness camp and we need to conduct entrepreneurship development programs also in order to develop the skills entrepreneurial skills to our students our students are future entrepreneurs for what we need to do we need to empower all our students with necessary entrepreneurship skills so we we need to impart entrepreneurial skills to our students in order to empower our students with entrepreneurial skills we need to develop our staffs also for that uh, we need to conduct faculty development programs on entrepreneurs so in order to concentrate more on entrepreneurial development in order to create uh, an entrepreneurship ecosystem in the institutions we need to develop our faculty members also for that we need to conduct uh, faculty development programs on entrepreneurship these are all the three important aspects we need to concentrate in our campuses the first one entrepreneurship awareness camps second one entrepreneurship development programs and the third one faculty development programs exclusively on entrepreneurship not only in our college we need to create uh, we need to do all these activities in the region by connecting your institution with other institutions for doing all these things uh, we need a structure without uh, an effective structure it cannot be implemented in any concern uh, in any institution for now we'll see how we can create a structure in our institutions uh, to carry out entrepreneurship development activities in francis xavier engineering college we have created a structure in that uh, structure we have e clubs this is the short form of uh, entrepreneurship clubs e clubs at the class level in each and every class we need to create entrepreneurship uh, uh, um, entrepreneurship clubs e clubs the main idea for creating uh, e clubs at the class level is to uh, create some awareness about entrepreneurship in order to coordinate the entrepreneurship development activities in the class at the class level we need to elect one joint secretary for that joint secretary will organize all the activities in the class now for the class level we need to create a joint secretary in order to uh, co- uh, in order to coordinate all the activities at the department level it may be a commerce department or bba department or physics department or uh, chemistry department or mechanical department mechanical engineering department or civil engineering department or computer engineering uh, department whatever it may be the uh, department in order to organize entrepreneurship awareness programs or whatever it may be the programs uh, we are going to conduct uh, we need to have a secretary at the department level that secretary needs to coordinate all the activities at the department level and for uh, for supervising all the activities at the department level we need to appoint one staff member as the coordinator 
So we need to have EDC staff coordinator in the department. And at the college level, we need to have a director for the EDC alone. In the Francis Xavier Engineering College, yeah, we are having a director. I am the director of uh, the entrepreneurship development cell in my college. And for this structure, uh, we need to create. This is not a static. Uh, uh, this you can uh, create according to your need, according to your convenience. But we need to create a structure for the entrepreneurship development uh, uh, center. Once you develop a structure, then you can organize uh, entrepreneurship awareness camps <clears throat> at the class level, at the department level, at the college level. That is possible. But during the entrepreneurship awareness camps, we need to educate our students who is an entrepreneur. What is entrepreneurship? <clears throat> What is the need for entrepreneurship? We need to address all these questions. See, for addressing all these questions, uh, if you are having uh, a good resource person at the department level or at the college level, you can use your own staff members. If you are not having the required uh, uh, if you are not having uh, the uh, resource person inside your uh, institution, that can, then you can make use of uh, some eminent uh, personalities from outside. Sometimes you can use the government officials also from the industries and commerce. Definitely, your government will have a separate uh, department uh, for promoting industries and commerce. Or you can call the higher officials uh, from the industries and commerce to give some advice, to speak to the students, to share their views with the students. <clears throat> and you can call the successful entrepreneurs also. Definitely, you may have a number of successful entrepreneurs around your campus. But try to make use of uh, the successful entrepreneurs also to create awareness about entrepreneurship. This is the uh, first activity we need to do the, after creating proper structure. While creating awareness, about entrepreneurship. We must uh, educate our students. We must uh, give awareness about how to start a micro or small enterprise. What are the steps we need to take? <clears throat> As I said earlier, entrepreneurship is a process. Therefore, in that process, uh, we need to take a lot of uh, steps. Various steps are involved. Therefore, we need to educate our students very slowly how to start a micro enterprise or how to start a small enterprise. Sometimes your government may extend some uh, assistance to start the micro or small enterprises. If there is any assistance from the government side for creating micro or small enterprises, you must pass on those information to our students. And the next important inform information is uh, we must uh, educate our students about the locally available resources. <laughs> We have a number of resources. Plenty of natural resources are available in your country. 
for what we need to do we need to list the various uh, local resources we have <clears throat> mostly your country is an uh, agrarian country for you are uh, concentrating more on agricultural operation say apart from agricultural operation you have uh, a lot of other uh, metals and uh, minerals also so whatever it may be the resources you have you need to educate our students about the locally available resources and the last one is uh, we need to educate our students about the probable business opportunities you must create awareness about the profitable business opportunities probable business opportunities once you create awareness about all these things the students will think about all these things positively now for the entrepreneurship development and uh, uh, the entrepreneurship development cell must create awareness about all these aspects this is also very much essential work though we are saying that uh, we need to create awareness about entrepreneurship in our campuses in our institutions apart from creating awareness about entrepreneurship we can develop and introduce a curriculum on entrepreneurship development or small business management at various levels this is very very important this you can uh, think of at the college level itself even at the uh, school level itself uh, we need to educate about entrepreneurship in order to uh, create awareness about entrepreneurship at the young age while studying in schools and colleges we need to have some curriculum for on entrepreneurship this we can introduce apart from all the other subjects they are studying they may uh, they may be asked to study entrepreneurship development as one of the uh, course or small business uh, management either you can introduce entrepreneurship development or small business management this we need to introduce at various levels including degree or diploma courses of the institutions not only in your institution you must take some initiative to introduce curriculum on entrepreneurship development in the nearby institutes also in the region once you start the uh, curriculum on entrepreneurship def definitely you can create uh, awareness about entrepreneurship and the third one <clears throat> to conduct a research work and uh, survey for identifying entrepreneurial opportunities Uh, this is also very much important why this is important uh, this is important because <clears throat> while creating awareness about entrepreneurship we need to tell them about the various resources we have in the region in the country not only the various resources uh, we are having in our country or in our region we need to tell them uh, the other opportunities which are available especially in the science and technology uh, science and technology areas as well as uh, in service sector areas this is very much important we need to conduct some uh, research work 
or we need to create uh, we need to conduct some survey what for to identify entrepreneurial opportunities we have recently the entrepreneurship development uh, cell of uh, francis xavier engineering college conducted one webinar on entrepreneurial opportunities in machine learning and big data analysis it is a new area machine learning is growing very fast big data analysis uh, we are using uh, even in the uh, even at the management level therefore we have conducted this to expose the opportunities which are available to the entrepreneurs even in the machine learning and uh, big data analysis see like this uh, we are conducting a lot of webinars also to promote uh, the ideas about entrepreneurial opportunities even in the science and technology areas students uh, uh, may be given small project work to survey the locally available resources you may give a small a survey work to our students to identify the various uh, resources uh, they are having in their area assume that you are having uh, uh, 50 students in a class <clears throat> if you give this assignment to each and every one of you at the end of the day you will have 50 survey reports this is very very important first of all the students must know what are all the locally available resources sometime you may have some important resource the student must know the student must know whether um, human resources are available whether metals and minerals are available if it is a metal or a mineral what are all the metals what are all the minerals we have in that area sometime you may have uh, agricultural operation in that area <clears throat> you must know what are all the agricultural activities that are, are taking place agriculture is uh, um, is the major occupation in the rural areas and in uh, and most of the people in malawi are living in rural areas that is what i heard and they are doing agricultural operation only therefore what the students must know the students must know the agricultural produce needs what are all the agricultural produce they are producing and it has to be documented they must know the major crops the time of the crop and the duration of the crops how it is marketed whether any processing is done before marketing the produce is there any scope for adding value to the agricultural produce is there any opportunity to export the agri products these are all the information they must collect <clears throat> we can give all these questions uh, to our students and uh, we can ask our students to gather all these information from the field See, nowadays, <clears throat> service sector is also giving a lot of uh, business opportunities. Therefore, you can ask your students to conduct a survey <clears throat> to document the existing agricultural services 
and the future service opportunities. Once you know the existing agricultural services uh, we are offering, once you know the uh, gap in the existing services, uh, you can very easily identify the future uh, service opportunities. And we need to identify the new delivery uh, service we need to follow. All over the world, we are, very, we are moving very fast from the conventional marketing to the online marketing. Lot of changes are taking place. Paradigm change we are visualizing. We are envisaging, especially in the field of uh, delivery. Therefore, we need to study the existing delivery system and the new delivery system we can introduce in order to market our products. Nowadays, almost all the business are done through mobile apps. And for uh, uh, delivery, we are using drones. Though these are all the new developments, uh, we need to introduce all these uh, developments uh, in our business. And our students must know the various uh, uh, new delivery uh, service systems uh, we are using. How the mobile app can be used to connect the business with the customers. How the drones can be used to deliver uh, the products and services uh, to the needy people. Now, <clears throat> I am going to show some of the latest uh, things which are uh, coming very fast. Being the agrarian country, you can think of uh, using the hydrophonic uh, farming solutions. In India, it is picking up well. Since in your country, most of the people are engaged in uh, agricultural operation. You can think of using hydroponic farming. <clears throat> this is one of the solutions for commercial scale leafy grand, uh, green farming. Using this uh, uh, farming method, we can offer clean food. It is a new design, a farm design. It is a new solution. This can be used in a uh, uh, small scale as well as in large scale commercial farming. Regarding the hydrophonic farming, <clears throat> without using a uh, soil, we develop uh, greeneries. Just to see the farm, hydrophonic farm. <clears throat> It is a new generation farming system and it fetches a lot of uh, uh, money also. <clears throat> Highly profitable business. Even in a small space, uh, we can do this. <coughs> Even at the rooftop, we can do this. See, they are uh, cultivating tomato using the hydroponic uh, system. Say so just like uh, uh, agricultural products, <clears throat> we can think of adding value to lime products also. You might have, uh, you might have heard about uh, uh, lime or lemon. See, we have a number of uh, value-added products using lime. You can make use of uh, the website address to collect information about the value-added uh, lime products. 
you can create lime powder <coughs> dry lemon powder you can produce lemon oil these things are uh, very much in demand in almost all, uh, all over the world suppose if you can uh, produce the lemon <coughs> you can do this come to the next example that is uh, value added onion products <coughs> we can grow onion in any place but uh, we must find out uh, the value added onion products we must try to add value to the existing products <coughs> if it is this uh, if you offer the same product nobody will buy therefore you need what you need to do you need to add some value for the existing agricultural products since you are concentrating more on agriculture whatever you produce in your country in your region you can add value to those products by adding value to those products you can export your products and thereby you can earn lot of profit also say this is another example in india we are following this see these are all value added products coconut cell is used as a charcoal using coconut uh, we are producing vinegar and the tender coconut water is uh, being sold in tins and virgin coconut oil we produce and it is being uh, sold widely in different packs not only in india it is being exported to foreign countries also of a lot of uh, opportunities are available just to see the uh, see this slide coconut shell charcoal briquettes <coughs> see all these things are available in the net just to go and see these are all the value added products normally we used to throw away the coconut cell instead of uh, throwing away the coconut cell we can produce uh, some value added product come to the next uh, objective <coughs> the next objective is uh, to guide and assist uh, prospective entrepreneurs on various aspects what are all the aspects uh, on which we need to assist our students we need to guide our students number 1 preparing project reports project reports for what project reports uh, for setting up new ventures sometime you may have some uh, government assistance for developing a small or micro level enterprises if there is any provision then we need to educate our students about how to obtain project approvals how to prepare the project reports then how to get the approval for our projects and we need to educate our students about the loan facilities from the different uh, uh, government agencies or supporting system sometimes some of the <coughs> financial institutions in your country may support setting of the uh, small and uh, uh, micro enterprises suppose if there is any provision for that we need to assist the entrepreneurship development cell must assist those prospective entrepreneurs 
what for getting loans getting the facilities from the agencies of our support system and we need to uh, support our students uh, giving information on technologies also <clears throat> if they need any technical support for setting up the small scale concern we need to provide those information also see these are all the uh, guidance we need to give these are all the uh, uh, assistance uh, we need to give for all the prospective entrepreneurs especially the student entrepreneurs see in order to motivate the student entrepreneurs we may think of organizing entrepreneurship day entrepreneurship day may be organized in the campus while uh, while organizing the entrepreneurship day you can ask all the uh, prospective and the practicing uh, student entrepreneurs uh, to exhibit their products not only their products for sale they can use their product for promotion also if you organize entrepreneurship day like this involving your students then definitely it will create uh, uh, it will uh, motivate the students to go further this is one of the opportunity we can create to display their products as well as to uh, sell their products this will be an important platform for the students to display their products as well as to uh, sell those products if they are able to sell their products in the campus itself either to uh, to the other students or to the uh, staff members working in the institution it will create uh, it will give you a boost for all the uh, student entrepreneurs this we can think of this we can uh, introduce in our campus in order to motivate the entre uh, student entrepreneurs in order to develop an entrepreneurship ecosystem in the campus students should be motivated to involve in innovation this is another important area we need to concentrate whether it is an arts and science college or an engineering college uh, we need to promote innovation this we need to concentrate more in the engineering colleges in the engineering colleges uh, the chances are more for innovation in order to uh, take up this activity we may create innovation center <coughs> we can create innovation center in the institution to motivate uh, innovation in the campus students may be encouraged to register their innovative ideas uh, whenever they come across with any such ideas our students will have lot of ideas we cannot underestimate our students whether they are doing arts and science <coughs> uh, program or engineering program definitely they will have a lot of ideas suppose if there is no opportunity what they will do they will simply keep their ideas uh, with them for instead of uh, keeping their ideas idle what we can do in order to motivate those uh, students uh, we can create an innovation cell and we can encourage uh, those students uh, to register their innovative ideas whenever they come across if they are having any idea we must ask them to register it this is the first step we need to take once they register their ideas 
then we need to nurture them that is the next stage we need to nurture them we need to grow their ideas how we can grow or how we can nurture their ideas innovative ideas by asking the students to sit with the mentor okay they may be asked to explain their ideas and the mentor can extend his help he can support the particular student to develop the ideas that is the uh, next step we need to take once they register their ideas for this we can conduct some competition innovative idea competition at the college level at the institution level we need to conduct innovation idea competition why we need to conduct uh, this competition <coughs> in order to encourage the students to think innovatively if you conduct this uh, uh, idea uh, innovative idea competition students will come out with a lot of uh, ideas they'll come out with a lot of ideas we have conducted number of uh, idea competitions uh, in our campus while conducting this type of uh, competitions uh, they'll come up uh, they will come with a lot of uh, new ideas innovative ideas what we need to do to promote those innovative ideas you may give some attractive prizes you may honor them or you may recognize them in the college day or you may uh you may uh, uh write an article about the innovative idea in the daily newspaper or you may give uh, uh, you may uh, put up a poster in the college entrance so that uh, everyone can see the innovative idea of the particular student here <clears throat> after conducting the innovative idea competitions uh, we should not stop with that we need to go beyond the competition while conducting the innovative idea uh, competitions uh, they will present their idea innovative idea while conducting this competition you have to shortlist all the innovative ideas <coughs> those innovative ideas shortlisted innovative ideas uh, may be motivated to develop prototype products prototype products this is the next stage in the innovation first we are creating an innovation center in the innovation center we are asking all the students to register their innovative ideas incidentally you can uh, conduct uh, in innovative idea competitions from the uh, innovative idea competition we can uh, screen some of the best innovative ideas and you can uh, uh, mentor it using your own professors and you can uh, develop those innovative ideas into prototype once you develop the prototype then it can be moved to the next stage in between you can conduct uh, some competition also in our college we used to conduct a 24 hours continuous weekend idea to prototype contest 24 hours they must sit and develop a prototype 
while starting the session they will have some idea they will come with the idea and they have to develop their idea into prototype at the end of the uh, second day they have to present they have to display the prototype say this type of uh, uh, contest or competition will create or ignite the spirit of innovation students will do without taking any rest uh, they used to do 24 hours without break we are conducting it in our college once you conduct this type of uh, uh, competition you can find lot of changes in your students you can find uh, lot of changes in the ecosystem uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem in your campuses see for this uh, uh, prototype contest uh, you can offer cash prize for the best prototype after this once they produce the prototype products you can arrange for uh, an angel investors meet angel investors or those investors uh, who are ready to invest in the small projects to whom they are giving this investment uh, those who are having prototype ready those who are finding it uh, difficult to finance their project therefore in order to get the financial support to start their concern to go for a startup angel investors meet can be organized in the institution after that we need to go beyond the innovation that is nothing but innovative product should be filed for patent through ipr this we need to do what for to secure the innovation once you develop an innovative product it should be secured how we can secure the innovation by filing patent for that innovation through intellectual property rights and we need to encourage uh, innovation and the filing of patent sometimes the institution may give suitable incentive or reward for this type of work sometimes the staff can also participate in this process for them also we need to give some incentive or reward in order to encourage the filing of patent in order to encourage ipr we can create ipr cell ipr cell may be created in the institution in order to motivate the students to go for filing of patent to protect their innovations the institution may encourage the students and staff to provide consultancy service to the public and the business establishment this is another important area very very important area we need to concentrate on. as regards entrepreneurship development is concerned the students and staff must be encouraged encouraged to provide consultancy services to the public as well as to the business establishment though we are uh, studying something uh, say for an example assume that uh, you are uh, studying in uh, uh, mechanical engineering department you can take up some consultancy service from the 
nearby business establishment you can do some service uh, remember this is a service extended by the uh, educational institution to the nearby business establishments and we can do uh, consultancy services uh, to the public also sometime the public may uh, need some service consultancy service if the public needs some uh, uh, service consultancy service uh, we need to provide and uh, monetary incentive may be given to those staff or students for providing consultancy service this we are giving in order to increase the uh, staff and students in francis xavier engineering college we have uh, a monetary incentive uh, system to support the consultancy service provided by the staff For this purpose, uh, the institution may evolve an incentive package to encourage uh, consultancy. Then, this is the next activity of the Entrepreneurship Development uh, uh, Center. We can organize guest lectures through TV. Uh, that is, we can organize guest lectures at the department level or at the institution level. Or we can... Um, uh, we can organize guest, organize guest lectures uh, through TV, radio talks, and seminars, etc. See, this will promote uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem. Remember, you must concentrate uh, on entrepreneurship in all these aspects. Uh, while giving lectures, uh, you need to concentrate more on uh, entrepreneurship development. Okay, in order to promote entrepreneurship ecosystem inside the campus. And we can organize uh, uh, visits to industries also for prospective entrepreneurs. Definitely, you will have a number of industries around your institution. You must uh, take your students to those uh, units. You need to give uh, exposure, industrial exposure while they study, whether it is an arts course or a science course or an engineering uh, uh, course, whatever it may be, the program they are doing, they need to be exposed to the industry and the realities of the industry. That is important. How we can do this? We can create uh, some institute industry interaction for this. Three eyes. Institute industry interaction. This we can encourage. This we can set up in the campus. See, this will fetch a consultancy to the institution. Not only the consultancy to the institution. In return, the students will involve themselves in innovations. And uh, Institute uh, industry interaction will enhance uh, the perception of the institution also. This is also very, very important. How we can uh, enhance uh, the perception of the institution? See, by connecting the institute uh, with the industry, we are exposing our students to the industrial reality. While moving with the industry people very closely, we can get a consultancy. By getting consultancy from those institutions, uh, from those industry, we are able to work uh, along with the industry people. This will definitely uh, uh, give a lot of boost for the innovation. Not only the boost for innovation, the institute industry interaction will enhance uh, the perception of the institution and the good placement to the students. Students will get uh, good placement once you concentrate more in the institute industry interaction activities. <clears throat> this we need to concentrate more. We need to expose our students to the industrial uh, reality. 
they must go and work in the concern in the industry while they are doing their uh, studies in the institution then the next one is <clears throat> we need to extend the necessary guidance and escort service to the trainees in obtaining approval and uh, execution of their projects students will prepare the project but uh, we need to guide them properly to obtain approval for the execution of their projects <clears throat> at the students uh, uh, level uh, they cannot uh, 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 they cannot get things done through their own effort only uh, for with the effort of uh, the entire uh, management the effort of uh, the entire uh, uh, staff support the students can get the uh, uh, get the approval for the execution of their projects support service uh, must be provided to the student to entrepreneurs to succeed in their entrepreneurial venture support needs to be extended for the students involved in innovation patent filing and consultancy <coughs> we must uh, uh, provide support service uh, in terms of uh, laboratory in terms of uh, technological support in terms of uh, human resource support we ne uh, we need uh, uh, we need to provide all these things then only the student can improve then only the students can uh, concentrate more in the innovation as well as in the consultancy the next one is uh, to act as a regional information center on business opportunities process technologies market by creating and maintaining relevant databases this is also very much important we need to create a, a regional information center for the business opportunities how we can do this we can create a separate wing for this entrepreneurship research and a development center you can create an, uh, a research and a development center wherein you can collect the database where from we can collect all these uh, database from the field from the society and you need to develop the database about the various business opportunities various technologies and you can develop the database about the market and market conditions also this center must act as a research and development center once you do this number of uh, people will approach you <coughs> for getting the data for doing their research and you can provide consultancy in this regard therefore by setting up entrepreneurship research and development center in your institution you can do research and at the end of the day you can provide the database to the needy people the needy people i mean the business uh, um, that is entrepreneurs and you can provide a testing calibration quality assurance design tool room pilot plant and other facilities for entrepreneurs in your campus you have a lot of uh, uh, laboratories those laboratories can be made use of for giving quality assurance for designing tools even for uh, calibration you can use your own uh, uh, laboratories 
if it is an engineering college definitely for each and every domain you will have a paka uh, laboratory you may have lot of uh, uh, laboratories in each and every domain apart from giving a, a practical exposure to our students those laboratories should be used for testing private testing or calibration you can provide a quality assurance you can design something new you can create a tool room or fabrication center wherein the students as well as the, the public from outside can also work together and they can develop uh, uh, new models new designs take for an example the uh, civil engineering department civil engineering department uh, uh, can provide um, uh, testing facilities like this uh, in each and every uh, domain we have lot of uh, avenues we have lot of uh, 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 lot of avenues for testing Now for instead of keeping it idle instead of uh, keeping all our uh, laboratories idle it should be made use of uh, for developing testing calibrating quality that is assuring the quality then developing designs not only for our own students for the entrepreneurs from outside also if you connect your institution with outside uh, outside uh, uh, there is a uh, with the industry then definitely will get lot of uh, exposure to our students not only to our students uh, definitely your name and fame will increase remember then the next one is uh, uh, we can render advice to sick industries uh, sick enterprises and uh, we can assist the entrepreneurs in rehabilitating them sometime you may have some sick enterprises what you can do you can assist them to come up in their life you can rehabilitate them by providing lot of assistance to them the entrepreneurship research and development center can assess the reasons for the sickness and they can offer solution or they can offer suggestions to overcome those uh, uh, sickness you can give a lot of uh, solutions uh, to rehabilitate those sick industries the next one is uh, to conduct skill development training programs leading to self wage employment so we need to develop skill development centers in all the departments whether the uh, student is uh, doing arts or science or an engineering program they need to develop some skills at the end of each and every year now for what we can do we can uh, uh, develop some uh, skill index they can develop some skill index what skill index student skill index so you have to assess the uh, skill the student must possess at the end of the first year at the end of the second year at the end of the third year and at the end of the final year after completing each and every year you have to assess their skills you must assess whether they are possessing the right skills if they are lacking in their skills means you need to impart more skills in the lacking areas if it is an engineering college you can implement this very effectively in francis xavier engineering college we are having a skill index the students will be assessed 
as regards the, the skill they possess at the end of the first year, second year, third year, and final year. We need to develop a, a skill sets uh, they need to possess. And uh, the skills we need to offer during each and every year. Uh, for the time of offering uh, the skills at the regular interval to all the students, according to the uh, year in which uh, they, uh, they are studying, they can very easily assess their skills at the end of the year. See, by developing the uh, student uh, skill index uh, for each and every year, we can improve their skills. Once they possess the required skill, the industry people will take our students without any question. Therefore, skill development centers may organize uh, the display of the skills acquired by the students. The display of uh, skills may be done in the presence of the industry people. If you conduct uh, the display of skills in front of the industry people, this will ensure good placement to our students. Say so with this, my discussion part is over. Dear friends, dear viewers, if you are having any doubt, now you can raise your questions. Dear students, now this is your uh, turn. If you are having any doubt, if you have any questions uh, to be asked, you can put all your questions in the chat box. The students, are you able to hear me? Are you following? I think I have taken uh, much time uh, and explaining. Yes, sir. Uh, dear participants, now the time is open for uh, your question and answer. Just post your questions in the chat box. Uh, so I will be answering your questions. Thank you. If you have any doubt on any part, I am ready to give explanation. What we are practicing in our college, I have explained. If you have any doubt, uh, you can raise. Dear viewers, uh, you can put your question in the chat box.
Dev says there is no response from your side. Professor, um, yeah. here in the chat box, we received the one, uh, one participant question. How can technology be applied in the agriculture sector? Yes, it is possible. <clears throat> uh, take for an example, uh, recently our students uh, uh, um, contested a uh, competition conducted uh, in Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu Student Innovators uh, Program. The project they have presented is agri fencing. Agri fencing. See, so nowadays, a uh, 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 lot of uh, uh, pests are coming, is it not? Take for an example the uh, grasshopper. Grasshopper is uh, destroying the fields. This we can avoid. This we can reduce using the technology that is possible. We need to use only the sensors. Okay, using the sensor, you can sense uh, the pest. You can sense uh, the grasshoppers. Uh, um, uh, grasshoppers. After that, uh, uh, we can remove or we can. Uh, um, destroy all those uh, uh, grasshoppers uh, using some pesticides that is possible or insecticides we can use this is one of the example or take for an example instead of going to the field we can irrigate our uh, uh, we can uh, um, we can uh, uh, do irrigation that is also possible what we need to have is uh, uh, the cell phone. Using the mobile app, you can do irrigation. That is also possible. This is another example for uh, uh, using technology in agriculture. See, like this, we have a lot of uh, solution. Using the sensor, we can do a lot of things. In agriculture, take another example: the uh, the latest uh, uh, agro farming. The latest agro farming is uh, we are using only the uh, soilless uh, uh, farming system. Soilless farming system. So, like this, we can use lot of. Uh, uh, lot of uh, um, uh, technology, even in agriculture. 
professor uh, another one uh, question from the participant could you also repeat the part about organization entrepreneurship awareness camps yeah just give some more ideas about that sir we can organize awareness camps in the institution at the time of uh, organizing the awareness camps in the institution they can uh, we must uh, uh, tell them about who is an entrepreneur what is entrepreneurship what are all the uh, activities we do as an entrepreneur all right say for uh, starting a small concern we need to have a lot of resources what are all the resources we need to uh, mobilize for starting a concern that we can explain or sometime your government may provide some financial assistance for setting up a micro level uh, uh, organization or establishments okay if there is any assistance from the government uh, uh, those assistance needs to be explained to our students we need to create awareness about those assistance and we need to uh, create awareness about uh, the uh, the various the resources we have see we need not uh, uh, we need not uh, uh, import uh, uh, any materials first of all we must try to make use of the locally available raw materials locally available resources take for an example if lime is available using lime what are all the products we can produce that we need to uh, educate to our students sometime you may have uh, some uh, minerals in your place in your region how best we can make use of those minerals uh, we must educate now for first of all we must uh, educate our students about the locally available materials locally available resources once you educate them about the locally available resources then definitely they will take some initiative to make use of those uh, locally available resources for setting up a, a small venture that is possible or take another example say nowadays uh, we are using mobile phones is it not mobile phones for doing any uh, business operation almost all the business operations are uh, uh, connected with the mobile mobile apps is it not this we can uh, uh, this awareness we can create therefore at the time of conducting the awareness program we must create awareness about all these things what are all the possibilities they are having say we are living in a uh, uh, corona period we are experiencing the uh, impact of uh, corona even in the negative uh, a uh, situation we must try to find out uh, the uh, possibilities the opportunities we have today in india we are uh, uh, seeing lot of uh, new ventures new ventures coming in coming up after uh, covid 19 for as a prudent entrepreneur he must try to make use of the available opportunities professor uh, we received another one question from another participant what are the key factors that makes entrepreneurs to succeed say the factors uh, say first of all we need to identify the right uh, that is uh, um, right opportunity that is very very important whether your business is small or big the opportunity you have identified will play a uh, bigger role remember once you identify the opportunity then you must take uh, steps to implement all your ideas for that what you need to what you need to do you need to uh, work hard and you need to take uh, initiative persistently 
that is also very very important only through persistent effort we can do a lot okay we can uh, take a lot of uh, new initiative see regarding the entrepreneur uh, he won't give up uh, sometime uh, he may fail in the first attempt what he will do he will take the next initiative sometime the next initiative may uh, may also fail what he will do he will take uh, another new initiative he will go on like this it shows uh, the persistent effort on the part of the entrepreneur uh, for to succeed in the entrepreneurial venture he must work hard and uh, it needs a persistent uh, effort on his part not only the persistent effort uh, persistent new initiatives he needs to take take for an example thomas alva edison you know the history is it not now he invented the electric bulb for that uh, he failed so many times we know the history of uh, thomas alva edison is it not the for the persistent effort will help the entrepreneur to achieve greater things tireless work and the persistent effort will take the entrepreneur to move up in the ladder thank you professor uh, i hope uh, is there any other question yes yes professor we have uh, another one question how do we factor in the climate changes whatever someone want to venture in especially the smart agriculture that being preached these days yeah this is the uh, question we got from uh, one participant a smart agricultural system we need to implement the reason is uh, the climate is changing very often according to the changes uh, we need to uh, change our inputs also agricultural inputs see for all these things uh, uh, we are following a smart agricultural system okay even for the irrigation we are using a smart agriculture you need not go to the field to check whether uh, is there any water on the field or not you need not go there sitting inside your house using your cell phone you can irrigate your uh, um you can irrigate your lands that is possible that is about the smart uh, irrigation is it not and uh, uh, you can use the fertilizer according to the um according to your assessment that is also possible take another example the hydroponic hydroponic farming it is uh, it is a new uh, method of farming say in this new method of farming uh, we need no uh, uh, yeah that is uh, no sand is it not without any sand we can grow uh, crops that is about the uh, new uh, uh, hydroponic uh, farming all right even at the rooftop uh, we can use hydroponic farming these are all the new technologies available that for using new technologies uh, we can uh, uh, grow farming even at home and uh, without going to the field we can uh, operate uh, irrigation we can use uh, fertilizers that is also possible and you can use uh, uh, technology for fencing your fields that is also possible you need not go to the uh, field and you need not uh, use any electrical fencing to guard your field using the sensors uh, we can do everything and sitting inside our house using our uh, cell phones using our uh, mobile apps we can do everything that is the latest uh, technology we have yeah thank you professor uh, the participant i hope you are got the answer for this question um any other questions
participants if you have any questions just put your questions in the chat box Thank you, uh, participants. Thank you so much, Dr. Ryan. Thank you very much for today. Um, so that is all we had for you on this international webinar. And we'll continue on for the next 18 days. Please try and tune in and ask more questions. Please be free to ask. Each time we have a different host, we are very much free to ask any question, and the person will be there to answer you. So we thank you so much, Dr. Ryan, for today. Please do have a blessed day and thank you to all the participants we had today. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you, professor. And uh, thank you, participants. We will join again next Monday for the next session. Thank you so much. I thank personally uh, Mr. Anthony Sakai Rai <coughs> for giving me uh, this opportunity. And I thank uh, the management of uh, uh, St. John the Baptist uh, University and St. Uh, Eugene uh, University. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity given. Thank you so much.